Hello everyone. This morning, I had once again shared a problem of retrograde analysis on the various social media platforms of Chessbase India, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And in this video, I'm going to try and break this problem down for you. Now, you can see the position on your screen. It's a composition by five great composers. Nikita Plaskin, Alexander Kistiak, Nena Petrovic, Michel Kailo, and Andre Fronkin. All these are extremely distinguished composers. And this problem was published in 1986 in the German magazine called Die Schwal. Now, what is the task here? The task here is very simple. You have to find out the first move ever made by the Black King of F6. So like all problems of retroanalysis, the position that you see is uh, the outcome of a legal sequence of moves played from the initial game error. So this position is legal and you have to find out what was the first move, the first ever move that the Black King on F6 played. Now that looks very unrealistic and uh, it looks kind of impossible to say what, what move this uh, King could have played. I mean, it was on e8, from e8 it can go to f8, f7, d8, e7, we don't know. But believe me, uh, there are certain things in this position. And if you look at it very carefully and investigate it, then it is possible to determine precisely with uh, absolute rigorous proof what was the first move played by this king on f6. So before I go ahead, I'll ask you to pause this video right here and give this uh, position a good think. Now, by now, I'm pretty sure that you have already spotted the unusualness of this position. The black king is under check from this bishop on a1. But the question is, how did this check ever happen? How did this check come to be? Of course, this bishop couldn't have just arrived on a1, checking the black king on f6, because it can only move along this a1 f6 diagonal. So certainly, it could not have just arrived on a1, checking the black king on f6. So did something, a, a white unit, a piece or a pawn move out of its way, unleashing a discovered check on the black king on f6. That is also a possibility, but in this particular position, we see that it's this is impossible. There are no pieces that could have moved out of the a1 f6 diagonal. So how did this check ever happen? Now here I'm going to show you a very standard trick that is known to all retroanalysts. The trick involving on pasa capture. So this pawn that you now see on e6, a move ago, it was actually on d5. And there was a black pawn on e7. So this black pawn actually moved two squares from e7 to e5. And, and this pawn on d5, the white pawn on d5, it actually captured this uh, pawn on black pawn on e5 on pasa, unleashing this check. This is the only way you can explain the check in this position. So if we take these two individual moves back, then we have the following position. Uh, there is a black pawn on e7 and the white pawn is on d5. Here the black king on f6 is under check. Black plays e7, e5. And now here white captures on pasa, d takes e5, and we have our diagram position. And of course, uh, the check over here in this position by the bishop on a1 is, is absolutely legal. This is just a simple discovered check. So a move ago, this pawn was on d4, and it simply moved from d4 to d5, unleashing a discovered. So we can also take this particular move back. So from here, white played d4 to d5 check, black played e7, e5 check, white captured and we arrive at our diagram position. Now here's something very important needs to be pointed out. The on pasa must have only happened from the d file. It cannot happen from the f file. So uh, let's say if we assume that the last move was f takes e5 on pasa, then we arrive at an impossibility. So if we assume that there was a black pawn on e7 and the white pawn was on f5 instead of d5, and the moves played here was 
were uh, e5 and then f takes e5 on pasa uh, this would be a this would be a mistake because in this particular position there is no way to explain this check on the king on f6 by the bishop on a1 there is simply no way to explain this check it could not have arrived on a1 there is no on, on pasa trick and there is no uh, possibility of discovery here either so this is the reason we eliminate the possibility of f takes e6 on pasa so the white pawn was indeed on the d5 and not on the f5 it was on d4 in the very beginning and it moved from d4 to d5 unleashing the bishop on a1 and it was a discovered check on the black king on f6 but here we encountered another mystery we know that white uh, plays d4 to d5 check here so it is white to play in this position but the question is what did black play last of course all these pawns on the seventh rank could not have moved last uh, it never these pawns never moved uh, the bishop on f8 never left its home square it was always on f8 and is still and it still is on f8 so the bishop did not move last uh, there is no way this rook could have moved last because uh, all these adjacent squares are taken they are blocked the knight doesn't have any last moves uh, because c7 and b6 are blocked uh, and this black pawn it did capture something on b6 but that capture happened a long time back since there is a white pawn on a7 a plug on a7 uh, a takes b6 could not have happened last here I am reminded of what uh, Sherlock Holmes used to say. Once you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Since all these black units could not have moved last, we are left with only one possibility. The, the last move must have been by this black king on f6. But where, where did this king uh, come from? How did it end up on f6 that is the mystery now of course it would not have come from f7 because on f7 uh, the king would be uh, under a double check by two white knights which is absolutely illegal it cannot happen uh, on e6 once again this is a this is an illegal position uh, we have a double check by the knight and the queen this is not a legal possibility and of course, you can't bring the king uh, to f5 or uh, g5 or e5 because two kings cannot be together. So this means that the king on f6 came from g6. It moved from g6 to f6. But if I put the king on g6, then how do you explain this double check by the bishop and the queen? Now, this is my question to you. Pause this video right here and try to. Try to find out how this check happened. How can you explain this double check by the bishop and the queen? I hope you were able to crack this mystery. Once again, we use the on pasa trick here. So two individual moves ago, this was the position. There was a black pawn on f7. And as you can see, the king on g6 was under a check. And this is a perfectly legal check. The bishop could have come from this diagonal, anywhere from this diagonal, or there might have been some discoveries or anything all in all it's a perfectly legal check and this check was met with f7 to f5 a uh, double step pawn push and here white captured on pasa g takes f5 and this came this king came under a double check from the bishop and the queen and here of course the black king moved from g6 to f6 capturing the pawn on f6 so earlier when i asked you what was the last move played by the black king it did move from g6 to f6 but it also captured while it moved it captured a pawn and that is the only way you can uh, explain this position otherwise this position would become illegal so summing up this was the position six moves ago here the black king was under check black played f7 f5 white took black took on f6 and now came d4 to d5 check Black played e7, e5, double step pawn push, and once again, white took on pasa. And this is how we uh, reached the diagram position, the position that we started off with. 
and now we, ha we will have to analyze this particular position and this and analyzing this position will tell us what was the first move played by the black king the first move ever played by the black king now this is a really curious position with all these pawns intact on the seventh rank and this bishop on f8 which never left its home square what can you tell about this king on g6 where did it come from how did it end up on g6 from e8 the only way this king could have moved out of the pawn chain is if it had taken a route like this it must have come out of the pawn chain via the a7 square that is the only possibility and now what can we tell uh, say about this rook on e8 well here this arrangement of pawn b6 b7 c7 and this knight on a8 is very uh, instructive so how did this happen this knight must have first entered a8 and then a takes b6 must have happened and this arrangement actually uh, implies that no second rook could have entered the eighth rank via the a5 so the rook that we see on e8 right now is the rook that was always on the eighth rank it's the rook the original rook from a the rook that was on a8 so this rook is actually from a8 and this king we know has come out of the a7 square but how can the king pass over the rook on the eighth rank there is only one way there is only one way for the king to pass over its own rook on the eighth rank and that is castling this means that this black king castled and if a king castles then it has to be its first move because if a if a king makes any other move before then it would lose its right to castle so here we go the first move ever made by that black king is long casting it castled on the queen side and that is how it passed over the rook and came out of the pawn chain via the a7 square so summarizing how did we solve this problem this was the position that was given to us in the beginning uh, this is the diagram we started off with and here the question was what what was the first move that the black king on f6 ever made that is what we needed to determine and to do that we simply investigated what were the last moves played in this position and we retracted these moves we took back these moves and went to a position that happened earlier in the game so so this is how we retracted the moves all these on passers and pawn catchers and we reached this position and analyzing this position was very simple uh, the intact nature of this pawns on the seventh rank and the bishop on f8 suggested that this king on g6 must have come out of the a7 square and these pawns uh, on b6 b7 and c7 and the knight on a8 suggested that this rook on e8 is indeed the original rook from a8 no rook no second rook could have entered the eighth rank via the a5 so that rook is from a8 and this suggested us that the black king must have castled and that is how it passed over the rook on a8 and got out of the pawn chain via the a7 square so that's how we deduced that the first move ever made by the black king was nothing but long casting let me know if you found this analysis foolproof uh, if you think there is anything any flaw in it i hope you were able to understand it and i hope and if, if you think there is any flaw in it then do let me know in the comments below because there is no way to check uh, these analysis using an engine or engine or anything so the only the best way to learn retro analysis is by is through dialogue and discussion so do participate and uh, leave comments uh, below and before i leave today i also would like to uh, give you an exercise uh, this is a this is another puzzle retro problem and it's composed by nikita plaskin and alexander kistiak it was also published in 1986 in the same magazine d schwalb and uh, once again in this particular position you have to find out the first moves by both the kings not just the black king but also the white king and the black king together and the first part of the solution here is 
exactly the same as what we have just discussed. The second part would require some additional tricks. Uh, let me know if you can solve it and maybe I would make a new video on this puzzle uh, very soon. So that's it for today. Today, uh, I'll see you soon in the next video. Till then, take care and happy solving.